In this video, I am going to solve this question. The true average diameter of ball bearings of a certain type is supposed to be 0.5 inches. A one sample t-test will be carried out to see whether this is the case. What conclusion is appropriate in each of the following situations? So let's start with situation A. So we are given that the true average diameter of ball bearings of a certain type is supposed to be 0.5 inches. So that means we are given that mu is equal to 0.5 inches. A one sample t-test will be carried out to see whether this is the case. So we are working with t-test and this is the claim that we are given and the alternate claim will be mu not equal to 0.5 inches. As this claim has an equal to sign, so this claim is our null hypothesis. So this is our null hypothesis and this claim is our alternative hypothesis. And now we are given that n is equal to 13, t is equal to 1.6 and alpha is equal to 0 0.05. The alpha is your level of significance. Note that in this case alternative hypothesis has a not equal to sign. So this is a case of two tail test. So let's draw a t-distribution. So this is how the t-distribution looks like, symmetric and bell-shaped. Now we are given that alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and this is a two-tail test. So that means here this region is 0 0.025 and this region is 0 0.025. So we have divided alpha into two equal parts. And now we have to find the critical value of t which we will compare with this value to see whether to reject the null hypothesis or not reject the null hypothesis. So in this case we are given that n is equal to 13 and we know that in case of t distribution the degrees of freedom are n minus 1. So in this case degree of freedom is equal to 13 minus 1 and it is equal to 12. Let's say this value is t critical and this value is minus t critical. So let's have a look at our t table to find this t critical value. So this is how our t table looks like. Note that in our case alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and we are dividing the value into two tails. So in a single tail the value is 0 0.025. So that means we have to look here. So in our case the value in two tail is 0 0.05 and the value in single tail is 0 0.025. So we have to look at this column and the degree of freedom that we have is 12. And this corresponds to the value 2.179. So this is our t critical value. So this t critical value is 2.179. And this minus t critical is minus 2.179. And we can do this because we know that t distribution is a symmetric distribution. And we are given that t is equal to 1.6. So t equal to 1.6 will be somewhere here. So that means it does not lie in the rejection region. Consequently, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So the conclusion in this case is do not reject the null hypothesis. So do not reject H0 at 5% level of significance. So that means we can conclude that the true average diameter of ball bearings is 0 0.5 inches. So this is all about part A. Let's move to part B. In part B we are given that N is equal to 13, T is equal to minus 1.6 and alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and our null hypothesis is same so it is equal to mu equal to 0 0.5 and our alternate hypothesis is mu not equal to 0 0.5. So as we know that this is a two tail test so let's draw the t distribution once again. So t distribution will look something like this and as this is a two tail test so we have 0 0.025 here and 0 0.025 here. So we have divided the level of significance into two equal parts 
and we are given that t is equal to minus 1.6. So let's find the value of t critical. So once again, this is t critical and this is minus t critical. And in this case, the value of n is same. n is equal to 13. So our degree of freedom, so degree of freedom is equal to n minus 1 and it is equal to 13 minus 1 and this is 12. So now we have to find the value of t critical and we have to compare that t value with this t value to see whether we reject the null hypothesis or we don't reject the null hypothesis. Well note that we calculated the value of t critical in our part A and it was equal to 2.179. We can use the same value here. So this value is 2.179. Consequently minus t critical is minus 2.179. We can use the same value of t critical as in part a because the value of n and the value of alpha has not changed in this case. And we are given that t is equal to minus 1.6. So minus 1.6 will lie somewhere here. So that means we will not reject the null hypothesis as minus 1.6 does not lie in the rejection region. So even in this case, the conclusion will be do not reject null hypothesis at 5% significance level. Now let's move to part C of this question. In part C, we are given that n is equal to 25, t is equal to minus 2.6 and alpha is equal to 0 0.01. And the null hypothesis is same. It is equal to mu equal to 5 and the alternate hypothesis is mu not equal to 0 0.5. Actually, this is 0 0.5 and not 5. Okay, so this is the null and alternate hypothesis. Once again, we can draw the t-distribution. So this is how our t-distribution looks like. And we are given that n is equal to 25 and alpha is equal to 0 0.01. So in this case, we will have rejection region here and here. And this is equal to 0 0.01 divided by 2. So this is 0 0.005. And this is also equal to 0 0.005. And let's say that this value is t critical and this value is minus t critical. So these two are your rejection regions and the area between minus t critical and t critical is the region where you do not reject the null hypothesis. So let's see where does the value of t calculated lies. So this is the value of t calculated. Now let's calculate the value of t critical. We are given that n is equal to 25. So in this case, degree of freedom is equal to 25 minus 1. And this is equal to 24. And now let's see the t table to find the value of t critical. To find the value of t, in this case, we have to look at this column. So if we consider one tail, then the value is 0 0.005. And if we consider two tails, then the value is 0 0.01. And the degree of freedom is 24. So it is here. So this is the row we have to look at. So in this case, the value of t is 2.797. So this is the value of t critical. So this means that this value is 2.797 and consequently minus t critical is minus 2.797 and our t is equal to minus 2.6. Well, minus 2.6 will lie somewhere here and it is not in the rejection region. So we can say that even in this case, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So we do not reject the null hypothesis at the one person significance level. So that means we can conclude that the true average diameter of ball bearing of a certain type is equal to 0 0.5 inches. Now let's move to part D. In part D, we are given that N is equal to 25 and the value of T is equal to minus 3.9. And we are not given the value of alpha in this case. So because we are not given the value of alpha, we cannot find the t critical value and we cannot find the rejection region. So what do we do in this case? So let's see what all information we have and we will take the help of t table to conclude something. So we are given that n is equal to 25. So this means that degrees of freedom is equal to 25 minus 1 and it is equal to 24. And now let's have a look at the t table. As we know that we are not given the value of alpha and we only know the degree of freedom. So this is the row we have to look at. And as you can see, the maximum value that we have in this row is 3.745. Or you can say the minimum value that T can take is minus 3.745. So let me draw a T distribution here to show you what I mean. So I'm saying that 
if this is how our t distribution looks like so say this is our t distribution looks like and here we have some rejection region and we don't know its probability and similarly here we have some rejection region and we don't know its probability what i'm saying is that this value the value of t here cannot be greater than 3.745 and the value of t here cannot be less than minus 3.745 this is because the maximum value that you have in this row is 3.745 and uh, we are given in the question that the t, the value of t is minus 3.9 and given this scenario we can see that minus 3.9 will lie somewhere here that is it will lie in the rejection region. So in this case we reject the null hypothesis. So reject the null hypothesis. Hence, we can conclude that the true average diameter of ball bearings is not 0.5 inches. And this is all for this question.